Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited. What a great time to be alive. What a time to be alive. It's 7 p.m. Well, 17 minutes after 7 in SA, 17 minutes after 12, after 10 a.m. in Los Angeles. Thanks to our New York friends. I had a friend who asked me all the way in Connecticut saying, what time do you go live Eastern time? It's 12, it's 1 p.m. New York time. We go live at uh, 6 p.m. London time, 7 o'clock in South Africa. And I'd like us to go on today and welcome both my L.A. guests and my Johannesburg guest by firstly opening on, on the conversation that I've been longing to talk about. Bishop, thanks to the media, there's a lot that we start realizing and we st we got to start asking ourselves if campaigns like Black Lives Matters, if campaigns against the brutality of while police are treating our fellow Africans in the U.S. and also uh, locally here, yeah, how, you know, police put rigorous measure, measures on blacks in townships versus the blacks in suburban area. Um, under lockdown, you see, you know, this lockdown is very harsh on people who don't even have the pleasure to enjoy big houses and big yards, and you're telling people in shacks to quarantine or to be, stay locked down in their small houses. I just think that we need to have these conversations to help everybody understand from, an, from a black perspective, there are certain things that we have not been vocal about. And one of them is the conversation we had, and it goes like this. The Constitution, and when you look at those who wrote the Constitution, you will start believing that it was written for the con at the convenience or it was written by those who or pre previously oppressed the very same people that this Constitution is supposed to serve justice for. And at some point, I want to throw the question to say, will we ever catch up as black people with 400 years of a kickstart that was afforded the superior, or you call it the, uh, what culture is it, Bishop? Dominant culture. The dominant culture. How do we play catch up when we still haven't dismantled the dominant culture and the power of its distribution of information? What we call the law today is still the Roman Dutch law. Our judiciary is under the Roman Dutch law. Our education system, our banking system. There's, how do we play, how do we even think we can catch up when the very same system we're chasing is the one that put these measures in place? So you can never catch up. It's like trying to fill an ocean with a, with a mug. In South Africa, the, you know, our constitu constitution says the people shall govern. But the people are not governing. Now, in the U.S., it's a different ball game. At any given time, Trump can take things to Supreme Court and to Congress and change the Constitution. The fact of the matter is the injustice of this world are so eminent, mm. yet we have a Constitution that's meant to undo all of this injustice. Mm. How do we correct that? For us to understand how to dismantle a colonial system, we needed firstly maybe to understand also how a colonial system is built. It would be difficult for you to use a plastic knife on, on a hard, solid base where, you know, a plastic knife will break. Let me give you a small little outline of how the system is established. Firstly, you, you help people or you manipulate the people to change their culture so that you can create for yourselves a business model that is sponsored by those that were colonized. Mm -hmm. that's, that's number one. So you tell them that your, your food is not good, your f f diet is not good, your fashion is not good, you what you, and, and you create a new form of life, okay. which creates the business that you want. And even religion also promotes that, but that's for another day, where if you can change someone's culture and say you cannot worship God as you, as, as you are, you must look like that for God to accept you. Then immediately go then open up a shop that will be selling the clothes that will make the other person acceptable. So you firstly, you build up businesses. Right. And immediately you have businesses, then you have a bag of money. Mm -hmm. With that bag of money, you walk up and you buy politicians. Because all politicians are for a price. It's prostitution. Sure. Anyone can be bought for a price. So businesses buy politicians. Mm. And politicians then have the power to appoint legislation. Right which is now what you're talking about in terms of constitution, which is level three. Yes, sir. So if, but the politicians who are being supported by the business have enough political will, then they can actually have a conversation at a constitutional level. Right. It's impossible for the local people in the community 
to jump all those processes and think that you can change a constitution because the constitution becomes the backbone of an economy, the backbone of a political system. Okay. And then from the from the legislature, legislature, you can now talk about media and propaganda and telling people what you want, which is what Hitler did. Then the question is, how do we work on that? And if the African does not understand that to build that system, it has taken the colonial system 400 years to, to build establish it. that. And maybe to, one word of caution, it is that the one who has oppressed you will never in a thousand years donate your freedom to you. The oppressor will never mm. donate his freedom That's to you. And at the end of the day, therefore, you understand that the, 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 the one who has been colonized, when he gets into power and does not understand how the system is built, he gets into power to become the new colonial master. Correct. So we have leaders right now who are not there to impact the community and change the community. We rather have leaders who are there to maintain the system, to make sure that the same legislature of the Roman Dutch law remains intact, for that makes them remain in good books with the Western world. Oh, Bishop, over to you, sir. It's clear for those of us who can see into it, and that is big corporations are operating the world, big corporations, have the money to push enough money to get whoever they want elected. The elected then makes the appointments and all of it is in sync so that the big corporations or the few that operate in the world control the rest of us. So let's understand this, that when constitutions are written, and we can take it not only from the constitution, but let's even take it from a biblical perspective. When Israel was released from Egypt, the first thing that God did with Israel was to give them Ten Commandments. If you look at the Ten Commandments, you will also see a variety of other rules and regulations that God gave to Israel. They came out of the slavery. So here is what's born. Here's what it's born out of. It's born out of the pain of what you have experienced, and it's born out of fixing things to a point where you will not experience that again. And so now the allegiance, if you notice, the allegiance down through the years is not to individuals. The allegiance now becomes to the, the Constitution or, in this case, the law. The allegiance is to the law. The law now becomes what you have your swearing for, your allegiance to, because this document now determines how things are run. Yes, and we could say it in another way, in a more modern era, we could say it like this. I am just operating according to policy. It's not about human beings. It's not about personnel. It's not about who I employed. We are operating according to policy. You do that in your business. You say, this is our our policy. Okay. The policy runs what's happening. Now, it's interesting that when the peasants who came to America exploited and destroyed the Indians, we have no Indian athlete, no Indian owned company except the casinos and they're on the reservation. We have no Indian politician that I know of. So the Indians have totally been obliterated by the peasants who came from a feudal system in England and put a constitution together. If, if you notice, whenever a person is elected, a president, they swear to uphold, protect, and defend the constitution. Anytime you see God dealing with the prophets in Israel, it's all about the Ten Commandments, Correct. the paper, the document. When the Saxons and the Norm Normans, when they got finished with whatever, here comes the Magna Carta. Where is the document that describes how black people should operate from here forward? Here is the problem. The people who were peasants are now lords and monarchs or uh, dictators. Because anytime you start eroding the strength of the Constitution in America, yes, you start destroying the substance for people who were, who are like you were. 
what happens is they follow the Constitution until they get powerful enough to, as the bishop said, so uh, when I tell you, bishop, as you said, they get to the place where they're now leading. So the corporation puts in who they want. Okay. They have the money to do it. Yes, sir. Then the people they put in, they have to check with them as to who to appoint because you got to appoint somebody who is operating within the parameters of what the big corporation wants. So the corporation money owns the president, owns the leader, Mercy. owns the person in charge. Then he owns the next group of folks who are his noblemen. And so, then they so. just own the Supreme Court, own the justice system. So there's no checks and balances. You got dictatorship. Well, what does dictatorship annihilate the Constitution? So all men are not created equal now, are we? After you destroy the Indians and you put a Constitution together and you got a bunch of slaves, now are all men created equal? Because after you wrote that, based upon where you were, yes, you sir. turn around and you become the monarchs. So now we peasants yes. have to get to a place where we can shake off the oppressors, so we can write our own constitution. Katrina Kane, I'm dropping the mic as you say. Shout out to Katrina Kane on Instagram right now. Bishop, I have an issue then. I want to ask, what's the significance of elections? If Ele elections are, are, are a cosmetic business. It's entertainment for poor people. <laughs> No, 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 no I, I want to be very blunt. I want to Come be very on, blunt. Come on, man. It's, 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 it's entertainment for black people. Because if black people are really serious <laughs> yes. about changing the system. Yes, sir. Firstly, we needed to understand how do we convert our, our own financial economic muscle. Yes, sir. So that we, get, we can have our own monies and we put people into positions of leadership who respect the, the, the common people. Unfortunately, the business does not respect poor people. Mm. That's a fact. Poor mm. people are a market. We're not people. Mm. We're a market. Mm. To them, we are, we are votes. Let's look at the manifesto of the current ruling party. It says the people shall govern. If people don't go out and vote, you will not have anybody you hold accountable for service delivery. So I think at some point, elections do represent the views and the aspirations can I speak in wisdom? of the voters. Can I speak in wisdom? Please do. You can never put on ribbons on a dead horse and hope it won't smell. It's a waste of time yeah. and effort. For a black person right now, as Bishop Noel Jones is clearly putting it, that yes. the constitution that is written by the prisons, it is not written for the intentions of liberating the prisons. Mm. No matter how many, how many politicians you put around it, they will not change it. Because the monster and the snake in the room mm. is this, Rome, particularly in, in the Southern Africa, mm -hmm. it is Roman Dutch law. Mm -hmm. that constantly govern the Africans like they are Romans and they are Dutch. The constitution has no respect totally for indigenous knowledge, indigenous culture, and how the black people live. And if what the people want is their land in South Africa, for example, then what is the problem? The problem now is the constitution. Section 25 says you must distribute it, you must what? You must lend it, redistribute. Distributing for what? If you take away my stuff and I find you with my things, you take away my things without law. Now you want to use law for me to take it back. What was taken away without law must be taken back without law. Bishop? One of the problems we have, and it's a great problem because it happens in Christianity, I'm, and I know it happens in, in Islam. Uh, I'm studying a little bit about Buddha and the rest of that right now, the other religions. Uh, but it, it happens in Islam, and it happens in Christianity, and it happens with constitutions, and... It's all about interpretation. Yes. And again, you're dealing with intent. It's your intent. Anytime you have the law, the law should stand independent. The mm. justice system should be totally independent of any group yes, of sir. people. And the interpretation of your constitution and what operates and what is the policies that operate South Africa should be independent of anything partisan. But here's the problem. You elect people, you put people on the Supreme Court who you call conservative and uh, the other who you call liberal, and they don't interpret it according to the law. Mm. They don't interpret the Constitution in its purity. Mm. In the same way, the preacher who has the corrupt intent, he gets in the scriptures 
and he interprets the scriptures according to his own self and grand self and and and, and grand, grandizement and according to his own selfish narcissistic wants and needs and he interprets it for his benefit. Here's something that is interesting. Yes. If you check the American Supreme Court over the last 10 years, it has not found in favor of anybody who was little. It only finds favor in favor of huge, powerful groups. This is what is happening because now we are using a system that should be for the people, by the people, to only satisfy a few people who are in charge because they've twisted the system for their benefit. Mm -hmm. And this is why we are now peasants in a colonial environment. You call it democracy, I say America is as colonial and has a feudal system mm -hmm. as did you up through the years oh, and this God. is the problem and the problem in the world you can take it or leave it is the poor against the rich mm. yes sir that, that 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 just seals the whole yeah. conversation but, uh, but what i hear what i hear the bishop saying is that justice is for sale Okay, but I want to add a point made by Kwasi underscore Kwa says, in South Africa, customary law takes precedence over statutory law. Bishop, is that the case? The question is, in as much as it is good to say, Yes. but do those people who are, have you heard of a customary court? Have you heard of the institution where actually cases of customary nature are being dealt with? Isn't that at the constitutional court? Th that's the whole issue. So don't, don't talk about customary law. You're okay. still talking about the constitution. Right now, if one of the kings was arrested for marrying a 16-year-old girl, it was charged in as rape, but culturally, the men must marry a younger girl. So there's conflict between culture and constitution. And who won the day? The, the, the king ended up in prison. I like what the bishop said. Justice is for, for sale. sale. Is for sale. The one who has money, can buy yes. a justice system. One of our viewers is saying, but shouldn't then the Bible be the ultimate constitutional book? You see, again, we go back to some very basic principles. Uh, and America has on the coin, and God we trust. Every group of people should understand, no matter what the rulership is, that theocracy ought to control democracy. Wow. All right, Ol oligarchy, whatever you want. It can't control anarchy, of course. It can't control oligarchy. But let's say monarchy and let's say a republic. The Republic of America should be controlled in a Christian environment by theocracy. In, in, in Israel, they're controlled, their democracy should be controlled by Judaism. In Islam, wherever there is a democracy in Islam, wherever there is, it should be controlled by their theocracy. The whole point is that people who believe in God operate by treating each other properly. The Ten Commandments is 60-40 relationship with one another. And when you understand God, you can only understand God in relationship to how you treat your brothers. Yes, sir. How can you say you love God who you have never seen and hate your brother who you see every day? It's impossible because the only way I can relate to God is relating to you and relating to the people around you. And that's the only way I can relate to God. But when people are godless because they're substituting God for money, now they have to be in control of the element, so let's put God aside. It was horrendously ridiculous and actually diabolic for people to say we did not elect the president to be a pastor. Hmm. We don't elect presidents to be pastors, but we should elect presidents who listen to pastors, because the whole point is, if you are in a theocratic environment and declare yourself a Christian, then all your actions should yes, be sir. Christian oriented and controlled. And you cannot mistreat, hate people who you went into a country and took it from. You went into a country and took all of the minerals out of Africa. You got rich with old money. You made kings and queens who own half the world. And then you turn around and hate the people you took it from. What kind of thing is that? You ought to be kissing their feet every day. Thank you for being passive. Thank you for not being educated enough to know what we were doing. Thank you for being ignorant. Thank you. 
we really want to praise you for allowing us to come into your country, a few of us, and take everything. My God. And you turn it, around and hate us too. It, is it, was it out of our kindness not to seek vengeance or it's out of our ignorance to think what has happened to us, we deserved it. Say you're in an abusive relationship. I've been on a date with somebody, and before the main cause came, I knew this person has dealt with nothing but abuse, and this is a warning sign, get away, run, full speed, touch. Don't you think some of us get so climatized to pain that pain becomes part of our DNA, part of our thinking, part of accepting what's wrong. We turn wrong and say it should be this way. Oh, he beats me because he loves me. Oh gosh, I've lived my life living this way and it should be. The white man is so good. He gave me a promotion after 10 years. I don't aspire to start my own business. I'm happy where I am and I hate every black person that wants to venture into their own business. Uh, I, I, feel like, I, feel, I feel like preaching, Bishop. I feel like preaching tonight. Preach, preach. Go yeah, ahead, man. Let I me share like a word. I could hear some preaching. If, if, if you say you believe in God, yes, then the God in you must see the God in me. Mm. And there is no way and no space in the sun yes. where your knowledge of God should be turned into abuse. Yeah. I want to respond in two ways. Okay. I'll give you the Zacchaeus example. Please do. But the colonial system is totally unrepentant. Mm. Unrepentant. Unrepentant. Got you. You come around, you colonize the people. After you colonize the people, you, re you, you refuse to give them back what belongs to them. So it's unrepentant on that point. You, 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 even, you even make it worse for them to leave. You, you create conditions that are far much more horrible. Okay. Because now you understand that the game has changed from politics into economics. Okay. Zacchaeus, on the other end, he has a desire to see God. Mm. And in his desire to see God, he strategically positions himself yes, where he can meet up the master. Okay. Climbs up on a tree. Yes. And then the master comes by, to which he tells him, Zacchaeus, we cannot deal with politics with you in the tree and me down here. Yeah. You need to come down from your tree. The white man must learn. The European system must learn. Colonialism must learn. Okay. Business must learn. Yeah. To come down where the people are. Okay. Take note of the following statement. Yes, sir. I want to take you home. I want to come home with you. Hmm. So that this business of politics and economics must be discussed within the settings of a home. It must impact the home. But I love what happens. Zacchaeus that, says this to Christ. No, Christ says this to Zacchaeus. Yes. Take me home with you. Yes. Have some conversation with you. Okay. And then when they get home, they close the door. Right. Personal interactions which prepare you for public appearances. Mm. And in the conversations of their closet. Yes. When Zacchaeus finally comes out of the house, yes, sir. he makes an announcement. All right. That's where the sermon begins. Yes, sir. Is there anybody out there <laughs> who I owe anything? Yes, sir. If I took from you a dime, I'm willing to give you four times more. Okay. Please come forward and collect what belongs to you. Now, if you look at this example, yes. had, had the European system understood the Bible, I yeah. like the interpretation concept. Had they understood the, the, the interpretation of the text. Okay. That w w when you have abused and you have stolen from people. Yes, sir. Th the whole issue of truth and reconciliation was the worst circus I've ever seen in my life. Okay. On the South African ground. Yes. Because out of the closet yes. of apartheid, the colonial system should have come out and say, is there anybody out there? Yes, sir. Whom I have taken land from? Is there anybody yes, whom I sir. owe? Come and collect three times, if not four times more. My Tell God. me that the British monarch right now carries a diamond that is sitting on the crown that is stolen from South Africa. All right. From Kalinan, right here in Pretoria here. Yeah. And who wants to talk about that? Johannesburg is a junkyard of a dumping site of gold dust. Mountains and mountains of sand mm. that the colonizers dug the gold and went away and left as a dumping site. Who will be accountable? The store shareholders who dug those mines, they are sitting in Dubai with their houses on palaces West waiting. Minister. And the day it happens, they will say the African government has failed. Who calls Zacchaeus to accountability? If the true gospel had worked, it should have worked on the hearts of the colonizer to understand that you cannot abuse a people forever. The Bible says 50 years you take my land. My After God. 50 years, return it back to its rightful owners to avoid war. It's 400 years later for crying out loud. When is this Messiah coming out for the black people? My God. Woo! Are we, are we? I, 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 let's move it a little bit from the spiritual platform yes. and let's move it into a psychological uh, platform because, because I, I always believe that if you interpret the constitutions or whatever 
policies we're running. If we're interpreting them from a money self-aggrandizement perspective, yes, it comes out a certain way. If you interpret it from a love of human beings perspective, it comes out a certain way. But what has happened to us psychologically as a people, and I'm talking about in the diaspora uh, as well as in the homeland, you know you're in the hand of a master when he or she is making you feel guilty for what they oh, are yeah. doing to you. Yes, you sir. are in the hand of a master manipulator when they, and they have you feeling guilty about something Clearly they what is yours. are doing to you. And that's what they have convinced us of. They have convinced us that we are ignorant, that we are subhuman, that we are and should be glad that they brought us out of the savagery of our forefathers and ancestors. And when you look at Pentecostalism in America, you have to understand that the African gave life to the European presentation of God. And it is significant to understand that we have a great part in Christianity because we have interpreted the Bible to survive. They interpreted the Bible to oppress. We interpreted the same Bible to survive. So it's how you interpret, and you are in the hand of a master. I have been, I'm 70 years old, so I have had enough experience to know yes, that I have been with some of the most beautiful women who were masters at manipulation. Woo! My goodness. And the problem with manipulation is you're looking for something from them. See, manipulation is different from exploitation. Okay. Exploitation is, exploitation, you just come with a big gun and you just take everything. All right. They, 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 the settlers exploited the Indians. They just came and wiped them out. Hmm. Manipulation is when somebody is offering you a nugget, but they're offering you a nugget with deception. And this is what we have done with people in church with this health, wealth, and prosperity preaching instead of telling people to sow into themselves and become something significantly independent from us financially, we made it look as if it's a quick fix. Give $100, God will bless you immediately. Oh. And that's manipulation. We didn't exploit them, we offered them a carrot. And that's what's happening now. They're offering certain ones of us carrots who control the rest of us in our communities. That's why they appoint certain people who they can control. Is there a way we can undo in our lifetime or we can pave a way for that great mind or someone who's still to come who can leap us to that journey of undoing the injustice that has happened to black people, Indians, um, Asians, to, to, uh, to be I'll exact. give you a beautiful example. Can we fix this? I'll, I'll give you a beautiful example, Please. but painful. I like, the, I like pain. Uh, the painful part. Yes. <laughs> Sorry for the illustration. With all sensitivity yes. to our ladies. Yes, please. Uh -oh. here, is a, here is a woman who has been raped. And here is the rapist. Okay. Standing, standing by. Okay. He has done what he has done. The woman is here. First problem is when the rapist tells the victim how to feel pain. This is how you're going to deal with pain. Mm. And you write me a manual of how to deal with pain. Mm. You want to touch me after you've done what you've done. You want to help me to wash myself. That's being a narcissist. That's being evil to the core. The raped person, the victim, Yes. firstly, they need to be surrounded by the people who love them. Okay. Give them space to deal with their own pain. Allow them to moan and cry the way they want to cry. Sure. 
and allow them to express themselves. And I know some, some educated people out there, the, some educated black people, might look at our conversation as if it's a frustration. Okay. It's a good frustration. Yes. If this is a way I am feeling about the system, yes, sir. allow me to cry. You cannot step on me and tell me how much, how must I express myself and how to feel pain after you've done it. The way of healing. Yes. Firstly, we need a robust African conversation. A robust African conversation. Yes, sir. Whereas black people, we need healing. Yes, sir. Healing at a psychological level. Okay. Healing at a social level. Okay. Healing at a spiritual level. Right now, some of our black people no longer have an interest in God. For the simple reason that they cannot reconcile the God of love in the hand of a white man and a shambok in the other hand and oppression in the other hand. And then you stand up and say, God is love. Okay. We have lost, people have lost faith yes, because sir. of the system. I've heard some people sarcastically speaking here and say, well, black men are damaged. As really? if a black man damaged himself. Mm, so we are a byproduct of this imbalanced, dysfunctional, dysfunctional. Psychologically, yeah. we cannot undermine and underestimate the damage inside our suits and little bow ties. Yeah. The damage in our nice little cars that we drive, living in our penthouses. Okay. Because even in the midst of those penthouses, then how do you know that you're successful? By having 10 women every night massaging your back with a big bottle of champagne and abusing others because this is the life you're dreaming all about. You become even a worse abuser and money becomes a vehicle for you to become more evil. Ma, ma, ma. <laughs> it's wonderfully put, uh, Bishop Mabonga. Charleston, for instance, when you look at Charleston, Charleston, now imagine your mother is in a room praying with other people and in a prayer meeting talking to God. Yes. And a, a, a little fella walks in the room and shoots nine of them totally unmercifully. Yes, sir. People who are praying, elderly people, people who aren't armed, and you just walk in and you shoot them up. My God. And before my mother is still on the slab, she's still on the cooling board in the morgue. She's not yet at the funeral home. She's not being attended to. She's not yet about to be buried. No funeral yet. She's on the morgue. She's laying there on the cooling board. Yes. And I walk up to the fellow who just blew her away, and I say, I forgive you. I may forgive. But it's going to take the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the Virgin Mary, <laughs> riding on the donkey. And lots of prayer. And, rope, and lots of prayer. <laughs> and a whole lot of folk standing around me calling on Jesus to get me to forgive. Yes, sir. Why? We cannot allow ourselves to become totally anesthetized as if pain, we have an analgesic for pain. Yes, We yes. have to come to the place where we understand that people are not supposed to live like this. Mm. And Amen. we need to come together with one voice and declare that we should not be living without opportunity, without justice, without the same systems that everybody else operates with. I am saying this, we need people like you, your generation, Generation Z, we need you to step up and talk. Take our wisdom, apply it, yes, and run with it. Take their education and make your life work with it. You know, they used our backs, let's use their head. And you preached this a couple of years ago, if not 10 years ago. I struggle with my strength being tested when I'm weak. I want you to appreciate my strength. At your strength. At my strength. Mm -hmm. Not at the point of my weakness. Mm -hmm. It's like two people in a relationship. I don't want somebody to love me out of my weakness. Mm -hmm. Because I'm forever at the mercy of any... Uh, 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 they will just take me... Uh, if I'm vulnerable, mm -hmm. my goodness. They will just exploit me because of my vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Why can't you appreciate me out of the strength in me and I appreciate you out of the strength in you? So the two of us come around the table out of two strengths. And I'm not around at needing you. And the best way I would like to have a relationship with the God I serve is out of appreciation, not out of need. Because when I don't need him, then mm. I'll be preoccupied with the things that I need. Self-love will be the best. And my, my parting shot. Okay. Until the person who, who feels weak and strong realizes their condition. Yeah of not needing the other. It's actually a deficiency. 
of thinking that by being approved and loved on the other end, then it fulfills the emptiness in your heart. Okay. I want to do a nice little lending yes. on the prodigal son. Because okay. I understand many of us work from that I paradigm. Love that. Take me to it. Until the black child understands that he has been sitting around the swine yes, sir. for too long. Yes, sir. He has been at a pigsty mm. for too long. Okay. He has eaten food which does not belong to him. Okay. The memory of home caused him to stand and say, I will not live in this condition. Okay. And I think the black child needs to understand that we are not peasants. Yes. We are not commoners. Okay. In Zulu, inkosikas. Yeah. Inkosazan. Yeah. Inkosan. Yeah. Inkos. Yes. You hear in the, in the language, yes. we address each other as royalty. As royalty. So, and, and until the black child discovers that he is royalty yes. himself. Yes. You, there is no way you'll make your mind, make up your mind and say, to hell with the pigsty. But the dominant culture taught us royalties associated with your bank balance. Uh, if the first royalty we have yes, sir. is not in money, yes. it is in blood. And a, a lion does not change its diet because of the protest of the sheep. <laughs> you know why I, br I brought the point of, 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 of appreciating me out of my strength? Mm. Because the dominant culture then threatens, like they did with Zimbabwe, sanctions on those that are now starting to be awake. Mo Mo Robert Mugabe, may soul rest in peace, raised the argument that we got to claim the land back. Mm. And what happened? Mm. So same with South Africa. Jacob Zuma made some remarks after his meeting with Putin mm. um, during the BRICS um, con conversation. Con conversation in 2016. Mm. And he said, you know, we need to start looking at the expropriation I of think land. for time purposes. The following day, yeah. the rand was weak. For time purposes, yes. we need another conversation on the banking system mm. and how it is founded on solid assets, immovable assets, which is land. Yeah. So it's not, an easy, it's not an easy issue. And that land system actually holds together the economies which are being held by the JSEs and the stock exchanges and etc. Point made. I want to get Bishop to make his remark on the issue of dealing with strength because I will not want to be in a relationship with somebody who is attracted to me out of my weakness. Bishop. I want to put the scripture in context his strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes, please. Because now we're dealing with, we're, we're not dealing with apples and apples when it comes to having a relationship with another human being as it relates to dealing with God. Because in the whole process of salvation, the only thing that a human being can bring to God is weakness. Mm. And this is why he has arranged for weakness to become a prerequisite for salvation. I'm being very theological on this. Because all I can bring to him is weakness predicated on the fall of Adam from a biblical perspective. All I can bring is weakness. So what he has decided to do with his omniscient wisdom is he decided then to make weakness a prerequisite for salvation. This is grace, unmerited favor. Let's take that strength and go into a relationship with somebody, another human being. Correct. One of our problems is our personal insecurity as it relates to being in a relationship with someone else. Yes. First of all, do you want a woman or does a woman want a man that nobody else wants? Come on. No. Absolutely not. Knowing you as I know you, and knowing your wife, as I know, you are attracted to a woman that a whole lot of people want. And she's attracted to a man that myriads of women want. So now you just, the you issue just boosted, is you just boosted how him a little secure bit, yeah. are you and how secure is she? I hate to be so personal. I shouldn't have brought your name up. But how secure are both of you? Now, one of our problems is our insecurity. So because I'm insecure, I want you to need me. So men put their women in a position where they can't buy this, they don't have any independence, they gotta ask for this, they gotta ask for that. But no, no, I want you to beg me, I want you to come on your knees, yeah. I want you to need me, because if you need me, I can keep you. <laughs> Foolishness, <laughs> foolishness, Drop the foolishness. Mic. People can hate who they need. Oh, but you, but you don't hate who you appreciate. 
I don't want to be needed. I want to be appreciated. But they I'm cannot done. hate who they appreciate. Yeah. They can't hate who they appreciate. Here's nice. the word, appreciate. Not depreciate, mm. appreciate. Bishop. I don't want to be needed. When are we? When don't are we need going? me. I don't want a woman who is codependent. I want an independent woman who is interdependent with me. <laughs> Can we please have Jones and Mabonga at Sentin Convention Center? When are we getting off this lockdown? Bishop, when are we getting you in Joburg Convention Center? We need this in a seminar format. If anybody agrees with me right now on Instagram, please respond with a yes. Um, you, are, you have <laughs> spoken it. Yes, sir. And the world of the spirit has heard. Yes, sir. And if it is in your mind to speak it. Yes, sir. Then it's in your capacity to deliver it. Woo! Mm. Ah, I'm seeing a lot of yes coming through. Sonia Smela said yes. Uh, Ntanta underscore Genesis says yes. T. Portia says this is too deep. Coast to Coast Group Media says yes. Kevin Cox says yes. Uh, Grand underscore Granda say yes. Mo underscore Musi says yes. Fijo Morento says yes. Bishop, everybody says yes. So ladies and gentlemen, while we are on the yes move, can we close by saying what we are doing is building an ecosystem of like-minded people who will catch on the baton and somebody in this conversation is going to leap or take this conversation further. We can only ignore night the thought mm -hmm. we can only introduce the possibility of that awakening but somebody must stretch the horizon i have no words but the needing and appreciating part i think nails it yes sir and many of us as blacks we think actually that we we owe we owe we owe the system something mm. and hence we find ourselves subjugate you know subjecting ourselves to such horrendous conditions yes sir when in fact we we don't need them <laughs> they need us oh. They need our money. Ah. The colonial system needs the colonized hey. to support the system. Hey. And I hope next week I want to bring up uh, and ask you about what Putin said, that Africa is the graveyard. Uh, Africa is a burial ground for Africans. Ooh. And all that went with that. We cannot, we, we can't authenticate that he said it. Nobody's been able to authenticate that he really said this. Yes. But we can look at what was said, whether authenticated or not, and see whether it fits the African profile. To your point, Bishop, I look forward for next Tuesday because the truth is... Oh, yes. Look at every oh, yes. African on Forbes and ask me why are their kids educated overseas and what is who calculated their worth. If it's on Forbes, it's on offshore accounts. Because I don't think Forbes came to ABSA. I don't think Forbes came to VBS or African Bank. No. It's sitting somewhere in the Swiss account. Mm -hmm. And why don't we trust our own system? Maybe because we don't own it or we don't have the capacity to think that we or can. Or maybe you can never trust the headmaster in a location school and their children are in white schools. Because if you say you're a good teacher, then why are you not teaching your own children? I want to ask for something because <laughs> at the end of the day, Bishop, we need to come back to our epicenter. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff myself spiritually, and I'm closing by asking you to please help us to close with a prayer. What we are saying and what we touch about, intellectually, it's intriguing, but the spirit must lead us in cultivating these thoughts. So please close with the word of prayer so you can help all our viewers. As we go to bed, we don't go frustrated. We don't go thinking that we failed ourselves for not being able to change the system. Give us a prayer that will leap us in the point of leadership. And I believe that we are headed that direction and we'll get there quicker than the 40-year journey it took from Egypt to Israel. Father, we come in the name of Jesus and we honor you and we appreciate and love you for all that you have done for us in terms of salvation we realize that your will must be done on earth as it is in heaven and that you have assigned men and women to bring that task and bring that to pass. And so now we ask you to give us the wisdom that is necessary to understand our past, to understand how we got to where we are, our psychological debilitation, our breakdown, and help us to look at it and forensically go through it to understand where we are and where we are and going to be. Resurrect us in our attitudes towards each other. Mm. Resurrect us in our behavior, yes. in our spirituality. Resurrect us in our prayer life and cause us to exemplify 
the things that you have given us so that what you have given us, we will manifest it to others. Yes, Help Lord. us to create a place of propitiation, create a place of redemption, create a place of adoption, of sanctification. Help us to create that place among us as you created it for us. And I claim right now that men and women everywhere will be lifted and exalted by the humility that they present to you. And we claim victory now all over the world. Yes. In Jesus' name, Woo. amen. Amen. Everybody clap your hands. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop.